Good morning. It is good to be back. As some of you know, I have a bit of setback here. I didn't know the hell that had been here for a ago. It's good to be back. Just hope I can maintain my stamina. It's good to see everyone, especially on this day, and see what's just happened. This shows you the power of God's Word, what it can do in our lives. And there are a lot of things that God's Word can do that we don't give credit for because we're not familiar with that book. So this morning, I want to make things simple, and there's one word we want to focus on, and that word is purpose. Again, I did not correspond with our minister. Nevertheless, <laughs> there's some things that's going to cross paths this morning, but that's all right. We're going to look at things from a different perspective. We talked about focusing on troubles <laughs> and on good things as well. But have you ever had anybody say, <laughs> lost your focus? What are they trying to say? We talked about this word quite a bit, but what does it really mean? Yeah, I'll put uh, one of your intended to. Okay. You ever thought about the gravity of this word, though? And how the thought of the importance of this word is? Term itself, the significance of it, things it may imply, the importance of the moment, and the quality of its significance. You know, we use words all the time, but we don't really give them their significance. We can tell that by our actions versus what we say. So, something's not connected when that's happening. And uh, a lot of times you may be talking to somebody and they're looking at you. But if you turn around and ask them what you just said, they could tell you the same thing because they're not thinking about what you just said. They're not focusing on what you said. They're not in somewhere else. But let's look and consider these factors along with others. Study. First of all, what does it mean to focus? What is the definition of focus? Second, what is the purpose of focusing? Third, how do we focus? And fourth, when and how often should we focus? You say, well, you know, this, this is pretty easy to understand. Well, maybe it is, but uh, how easy is it to do? That's the thing about it. A lot of things are easy to say. They're just not easy to do. And there's reasons for this, and we're going to look at those. Let's look at the definition, first of all, of focus. It is a center, first of all, of activity. It is a center of attraction, and it is also a center of attention. Because when we're focusing, we're focusing on one of those areas. For instance, if you uh, are taking in a sporting event and the uh, team's down there on the field playing, where does the activity take place? Down on the field. Right? But have you ever seen people go to a ball game and here's one that's trying to listen and somebody's talking in their ear? It's hard to keep a focus on the field when somebody's talking to you. In other words, that's a distraction. Okay? Well, now, just what the lesson that we just had emphasized was, there are a lot of distractions on there. I know you've gotten up in the morning and have something on your mind and before the day is gone. In fact, maybe early on in the day. You don't think another thing about that because something else is taking a distraction. You're no longer focusing on the important object that you had to begin with. Now why is that? 
That's because certain things take a priority when we're with folks. And even though it may be important when we're focusing on something else, immediately takes us away from that. Maybe it's not even willingly, but it's something taking your, your mind and your distractions away from that. Now, let's just think about some things. Sean's already brought out some good things here that catches our attention. Would you say COVID has our attention? Would you say we're focusing on why do we focus on it so much? What keeps us focused on this? Think about it. The news. News. News can come from TV, but it comes from our mouths too. I bet you there's not a day that goes by that somebody don't mention this term. So that more than once. Right, because it's got our full of attention. In fact, we can't do a lot of other things. We can't even work. We can't do our jobs. We can't do anything because we are so wrapped up in this disease. Yeah, we, we got to talk about it at work the other day. Exactly. Now, what would be something to be a lot more important than that? Eternity. I'm sorry? Eternity. Eternity. But yet, how often do we focus on eternity with all these distractions out here? We're so busy to think about. But we're going to talk about this in a way that Jesus talks about it. Let him explain this a little better than you. But it is the center of the main object or activity in one's life. Now from time to time, that changes. Um, as you grow from one stage of life to another, your focus gets on other things. As you get older, things change with your focus. In fact, Sometimes it takes getting older to get our minds out of the things we don't need to be thinking about. Because we're not thinking about older. Heaven will be. Hey, it might not be. Some people don't live to get older. So that's a certainty, as Sean brought out in the lesson. We're going to die. When are you going to die? Do you know? No, you don't. But do you know you're going to die? Yes, because everybody does. We witness it every day. People we love, we love to have with us. We're no longer here. And soon they'll say that about you. Okay. Then what? Then where's our focus going to be? Only one place. Where are we going? But we're still here, so what can we do about this? What should we do about this? In this, again, with the definition of it, it is the center of our thoughts that govern the main activities or priorities of the heart and the mind. Now, your arm or your toe, if you really ever been thinking about COVID, it's all there. Here. We can't focus with those. We focus with right here. And so right here is where the distractions come as well as the good news and the changes we made. So we need to keep that in mind. So where's our focus when it comes to those things? If a doctor gives you a bad diagnosis, that'll get your attention more. Even though you may have something that was wonderful in mind, he's telling you you don't have the best of Where does your focus go? Now, this is more important. In fact, I can't, this is this is not even important anymore. I, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to take a long vacation now. 
So you see, things change with us from time to time. But we obey the gospel. Today, we're happy. It brings us joy. And it should. But is that focus going to stay there? Not if the devil can help you. He's going to bring you back and say, I don't forget about this. And don't forget about that. You owe the world that. You know, you don't owe the world anything. The only person you owe is God. And I mean the only person you owe, because He is responsible for everything you have. So, nobody has priority over God. But you've got to focus on that and come to understand that. It is something that is able to garner and to hold one's utmost attention. Just like I said, things change from time to time. Our focus changes. But who controls that focus? Who is the ultimate one to change your focus? Who God. Right. No, you are. You focus where you want, and God will tell you where you need to focus, but you have to be the one to do it. See, this is where we think God is going to do everything for us. He can't. He can't do anything for you that you won't listen to. You have to make the change of your focus. God might tell you not to be in a certain place, but unless you don't go there, it's not going to be a good for God to tell you because you're still holding on to your focus. experiencing the wrong things in life. That's what we all do because that's self uh, indulged when we're born in this world. And we were talking about that one. It's in our members. Sin is in your members. You've got to understand that. Yourself is going to be your worst enemy. Always is. But you are also able to be the one to make the decision. You've got to focus on that. Don't ever let somebody else control what you think. Let God do it. By listening to Him. But you've got to make the choice in this moment. Because you're the one who makes the ultimate choice. This is why it's so difficult. Adam and Eve had that choice. Every day, you and I have that choice. Because the devil puts stuff before us too. That's his job. Because he hates God and he wants to destroy everything God has made for us. He does not want God to get in one of us. So, he don't play fair. He hits you where it's the lowest and he can hit you. So, he's going to gain your focus if you're not careful. No matter how happy you may be, he's going to be able to let focus. So remember that. So from God's word, let's consider his thoughts and focus on what can be done about this, what should be done about this. What is it in life that demands the priority of your thinking or object? What is your object in life that demands your object? Now you have to think about this because that differs your thinking. I want you to think about it. Of all the things that you do every day, what is the most common thing that you find yourself focused on? Is it somebody? Is it some way of life? Is it some state that you want to reach in money, in prestige, in power? Or is it just love? Something that just there's so much in love that I don't have to focus on. But you see, that love should be to God first. We need to understand that. What do we do? Because when you meet the right person, they're going to get your attention. That's why you met them. But you still got to understand both of them. God's spirit is sent. 
because without God, you wouldn't have that human person that you love so much. Without God, you wouldn't have that beautiful home that you have. You wouldn't have that beautiful car that you have. You wouldn't have the beautiful friends that you have. You wouldn't have any of that without God. So remember where the focus was to be. And I said that because we're going to be talking about something that should bring that to the forefront. That is, the priority in life, the activities of your life. What do you find yourself getting up and you can't wait to get involved? Don't get up after that long. You say good question. It's the fact that we're in the law, isn't it? <laughs> the commercial was this girl was walking out through the day she walked in the water because she's so busy with this thing. People do that and run into other cars. Read the last way. Focusing on this thing. Which is full of deception, lies, and everything to destroy. Now there's some good things about that. But you have to be able to discern between the two and glorify them. So what is it that really has your activities in? Is your activities to get up and go help somebody? Or to get up and learn more about God? Or is it to learn more about this job that you want? Or learn more about something that you're really intrigued by? You spend your life doing that? Yeah, I was watching God yesterday, just thinking about those people. And they put every hour of their life into the hand of God. Because they don't want to know. But then I look at these old people playing golf out here and I think, you know, they love that. And they just can't hold the stand. They don't get paid for any more time than they play golf. That's what they've lived for all their lives. And many of them don't have a family because of it. They have forsaken everything in life that they can. And there's nothing wrong with playing golf, is it? But what has it done? What is the activities I do every day really for me? Are they for me? Are they for somebody else? Or are they for God in general? Because God has demanded for us to do things for others. Are we good at that? Or is it all about what I want and my focus? So let's look at these one by one. First of all, the center of activity is what we're just going to talk about. We need to understand and recognize what our main objective is in order to know what God would have us do concerning that to be right. Now there's things you can do that are right and things you can do that are wrong. And unless something is violating God's rule to begin with, it's okay to be involved in it. But it's not that involvement as much as it is the control of that over you, the objectivity. That's my main object. Nothing should ever take that position in your life, whether it's a job, a career, whether it's a person, because soon this will all be gone. And you've got to keep that in mind. You've got to focus on it as you go through life. And you've got to do the things that are right. And if you do, you're going to sleep a lot better. You're going to be a lot happier. Because no matter what happens here, you still have a major reward to look forward to. But you spend all of your time accomplishing all you want on this earth. Paul says all he, he considered it as done. What he had done. Now look at what Paul had done. He was a man that was prestigious. He was a very religious man. And one that thought he was doing right. He persecuted the church. But when he learned the truth, he gave every bit of this up because it wasn't because that was controlling it. He believes it to be right. We can be that wrong and yet think we're that right because Paul proved that. But when we learn we're wrong, that's where I've got to make a decision. Not somebody else. And I can't fool somebody else by telling them I'm making a decision when I'm not just to appease them or even trying to appease God. 
So we've got to do what is right, but how do I know what's right? I do not in this understanding of what I need to do. Let's notice what God said, first of all, not to do. Turn to uh, the sixth chapter of Matthew with me, and let's look at what Jesus had to say about some of these things that we're discussing here. Obviously, there are too many things that we could apply this to to get all of it in, but let's look at what Jesus said. Look at Matthew 6 and verse 9. 6 and verse 9. I'm mean, 19, I'm sorry. Matthew 6, 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Now, what did he mean here? You see, one of the problems with people become a Christian, they think, how can you work? If I'm not to do it, am I not supposed to work money? Am I not supposed to? Go ahead and work for my family, and I supposed to just quit my job like the apostle did and go to preaching? No. No. First of all, before you can preach, you're going to have to learn what's in the Bible to preach. Or else you're going to be preaching from your own heart, and man doesn't have anything to do with salvation. God's Word is what we need to be preaching. If you're going to do that, now if you're going to do that, you still have an obligation to teach your family. First Timothy 5 8 says if a person, that is, he's talking about Christian here, does not take care of his own, he is worse than the infidel. He expects you to work. He expects you to quit work. But when we're not working, what do we do? We're thinking about ways we can gratify the flesh, right? Maybe a good vacation. Going in place of God, maybe this is this or this or that. I want you to think about this. Jesus is our example. What sport did Jesus play? Anybody tell me what sport Jesus played? What team was he part of? You know, Lord, we'll let you know that quickly. Man. We're part of the They may be losers, but we're part of But how many people did Jesus approach and talk about? the 
does is distract me from what I need. That's why people would lose their job because I was listening to a minister the other day talking about this. You know what pornography is the greatest where it's used in all time. And that's where the most of it is done. Those people are getting their attention taken away from the truth and what's right. And focusing on this and that's like an addiction. Sin is an addiction. But if you don't give it a chance, you don't take that first step of God. You don't take that first shot or something. If you don't take that first meal, if you don't go on the line with somebody that you don't need to be missing with somebody's married or somebody that's been married and you're not. You see, it's so innocent to begin with. Because your body craves those things. It's supposed to put on the marriage. That's where it's supposed to be. That's why we take partner in the That's why God made us you. But we want to use that anytime our Flesh calls for it. Because that's a strong, strong pull. And if your focus is not where it needs to be, you're going to follow that. It's like you see this old dog. I can't remember what they call it, but they take out a dog biscuit. And of course, you can see, you know, the smell. And here's this old dog just spoke through the air. He's after it. He was totally under the control of that dog biscuit. What's the way we don't want to do We're led astray and don't even know it because we're so focused on this. But God said, don't lay up treasures for yourself in the earth. Now let's look at what those treasures are. We're going to have to finish this next time, but we're going to get this, this first thing to the right way. Treasures are the things that get my attention. But in the day he was talking to these people back here, the main treasures in their life was gold and silver, all type of ornaments to adorn or something with, and changes of clothing. You know, you and I don't think about having certain changes of clothing, but back then they did. They really sought after changes of clothing so that they could look different. That was important in their life. And that's what they, if you read the sixth chapter of your days, you can talk about the Lord's Lord Jesus, about what you eat, what you drink. He goes into that. And I won't study that all the time. But notice what he said here. Lay out of treasures where moths and rust corrupt. Now, what was the purpose of saying that? No matter how much gold you get, no matter how much apparel you get, there's something here, and please break through and speak also. There's some people who have given their lives for a person that had to take them away from the But you can't take away the reward's God bless you, you unless you allow somebody that can't see it. They can't touch you because God's going to see it. But you've got to focus on what God and you focus on. Time is up. We're going to go back into more of this in detail in our next lesson. So, as you think about this, let me read the sixth chapter of that. You might want to go. Thank you for your attention. Any questions?